This is how to become the top 1% of cybersecurity candidates. First, no more certs. Get those technical cybersecurity projects onto your resume as soon as you can. So I've had the chance to connect with and interview so many people who have started their careers in cybersecurity in the past five years. And the biggest thing that separates a average candidate from a really good candidate is really just their project portfolio. I've seen way more job candidates with three to four strong technical projects on their resume get hired into a job compared to someone with three to four certifications on their resume, but not any hands-on experience. So yes, certifications are important to a degree, but you really don't need any more than two of them, especially if you're just starting out. You don't need four, five, six certifications on your resume. You need hands-on training. And if you're at that point in your learning journey as a cybersecurity analyst, and you're deciding what you should focus on next and what resource you should pick up, what things you need to be doing to be able to get the attention of hiring managers and recruiters, it's going to be the hands-on projects. It's going to be the job simulations. It's going to be the SOC simulations, building your own home lab, getting strong technical experience, using the actual tools that you would be using on the job. A really easy way to do this is by looking at two or three job applications that you're applying for, looking at the overlapping skills and tooling that they want their candidates to have, learning how to use those skills and getting some hands-on practice on a project in your home lab. And then, and then of course, writing about it on your resume, on your project portfolios, so that recruiters know that you actually have hands-on experience, not just the foundational knowledge. Which leads me into number two, and that is to start posting on LinkedIn, your learnings, your wins, your achievements, everything. And I know not everyone is going to want to hear this. I know sometimes posting on LinkedIn can be a bit intimidating, a bit awkward even if you've never posted on LinkedIn. And of course your connections are all potentially your classmates, your colleagues, your friends. So it can be a little bit awkward. I'm not gonna lie to put yourself out there and start posting on LinkedIn. This is something I did starting January, 2024, exactly almost one year ago. And LinkedIn has changed my life. It's brought me job opportunities, recruiters literally coming to my inbox with potential job offers. It's gotten me speaking engagements where conferences have reached out to me to be a speaker at their conference. Like that's not an opportunity I would have ever thought I would have had. But if you're someone who is looking for a job in cybersecurity, where do people go when they're looking for jobs? Where do hire managers and recruiters go when they are looking for people to hire? It's going to be LinkedIn. And what I really recommend is to work in public, which basically means working in front of people. So if you're working on a new home lab, if you're working on a new hacking project, if it's your first time using Burp Suite and you write up a report of your experience, a beginner's guide, a tutorial, any tips that helped you and may help someone else who is also learning Burp Suite, these are the things that are going to get you noticed by hiring managers, by people who are already in cybersecurity or by people also breaking into cybersecurity. There are so many success stories that I see almost every week where someone is getting a new job because of a connection on LinkedIn, because of something they posted. And you're not just writing to the void. This is the professional network to be on. And personally, I think you're doing yourself a huge disservice if you're not putting yourself out there. And guys, I'm not even telling you to go out to conferences anymore. Yes, of course, still go to conferences, still go to B-Sides if you're able to. I know those tickets can cost a lot of money and even just travel expenses to a B-Side to an event like that can cost a lot. So if you're unable to go network in physical conferences and physical B-Sides and events, then you should be networking online for free on LinkedIn. And it's really just about sharing your learnings publicly because you never know who's going to be seeing them. You could be posting something about this new project that you did in your SOC home lab and a hiring manager may come across it who is hiring for an SOC analyst role. They may engage with your post. Maybe they just like it. Maybe they comment something like, hey, this is exactly where I started when I was starting out. And maybe from there, you'll send a connection request. And then maybe when there's a job application open for an SOC analyst, Analyst, they share it on LinkedIn and you see it, you can directly apply and the hiring manager already knows your name because they've engaged with you before. Now, of course, this is a theoretical scenario, but these are the kinds of scenarios and situations that you'll see by putting yourself out there on LinkedIn. You're essentially just expanding your field of potential opportunities by sharing your learnings, your achievements, your successes, your lessons learned. And in the long run, this is going to be a lot more effective than just blindly applying to jobs and sending out applications and potentially never hearing back from a lot of them. Because let's face it, nowadays, a lot of people are hiring people that they may already know, that may already be in their networks. And if you're starting out in cybersecurity with no cybersecurity network, then you have to create your own network. And this is the starting point. Okay, so what if you're trying to break into cybersecurity with no experience and want to start your career in tech in an area that has a lot less competition than cybersecurity or IT? If this sounds like you, then I'd recommend starting with software QA engineering. There's no other investment that you can make besides in yourself to be able to earn a high tech salary in just a few months. Starting a career in tech is one of the best ways to do this and specifically software QA engineering. This is a job that opens doors to the tech industry without needing coding experience or a technical background. As a QA engineer, you'll play a crucial part in software testing, 
Networking, which is also an overlapping skill in cybersecurity as someone who was previously working on secure SDLC, which basically meant making sure that all of the code that we were shipping and pushing to production was actually secure, well-tested, free of any known vulnerabilities or exploited vulnerabilities. And having something like this on my resume would have been really helpful if you are interested in eventually breaking into cybersecurity. The demand for QA professionals continues to grow in the US with an average salary of $67,000 per year, according to Glassdoor. At Careerist, they make it possible to achieve this in as little as seven weeks, and their online bootcamp provides everything you need from hands-on projects, expert mentorship, and career coaching, all designed for complete beginners. And these aren't just pre-recorded classes, these are live lessons taught by QA professionals from Meta, Google, and Apple. So you really are learning from the best of the best. Packages start at just $690, making it an affordable way to invest in your future. Over 1,000 graduates have already landed high-paying tech jobs across 42 states after completing their program. And may I just add that this is a tiny, tiny fraction of what I personally paid for my degree. So I do think alternative education like bootcamp programs are definitely worth it if you're willing to put in the time and effort it needs to succeed. You can start your tech journey today with Careerist, which can also be a great pathway into cybersecurity, and you can learn more about their full software QA engineering program using the link in my description. Thank you to Careerist for sponsoring this portion of the video, and let's get back to the rest of the topics. Okay, tip number three. This is to create three resumes that you're going to apply to jobs with. Now, I know this sounds kind of excessive, but it's going to be a lot easier than you catering and tweaking your resume into every single job application that you apply for. I know that used to be advice that people used to give at some point, but that obviously is going to take a very long time, even with AI tools nowadays. So make three versions of your resume for the most common jobs that entry-level cybersecurity professionals will apply to. This is going to be SOC analysts, junior pen testing roles, and GRC or IT auditing roles. So this means when you see a job that says hiring for a security analyst, a lot of times security analysts can be used interchangeably with an SOC analyst or even someone who is in pen testing. So you really have to look at the job application to see what resume you should submit for this, just to make sure that you're aligning with what the hiring managers are looking for. If you apply to a security analyst role and it's actually more so related to the red team, for example, if they use certain tools like Perp Suite, Nmap, Call it Linux, Nessus, these are tools that are more so related to pen testing, and this is also where your technical cybersecurity projects are really going to come in handy. Each of your resumes should list different experience and projects that are relevant to the job that you're applying to. So if you see a job listing that is more catered towards red teaming skills, then you're going to submit your red teaming resume to that job when you apply. I know it sounds complicated when you're starting because you have three resumes, you have to decide which to send over, but after a while you'll get used to this. It's really just making it easier for yourself and also making it more likely for a recruiter to get back to you because you actually have a resume that aligns. I know so many people who apply for entry-level jobs who apply to cybersecurity jobs and their resume may only have one small thing about cybersecurity and maybe their security plus and they think that's enough, but it is not. Considering how competitive the job market is, you're competing with so many different job applicants new grads, experienced professionals, so you really want to put your best foot forward. There should not be anything that is irrelevant to the job on your resume. And this goes without saying, but by now you really should have built your own home lab. I have a video on this and there is no excuse in 2025 to not have a home lab. I'll link that video down in my description. You can basically build it for free with completely free tools and resources. So definitely recommend getting a home lab and getting some practice in so you can start all of those cybersecurity projects that you've been thinking about. And I'll also have an updated cybersecurity project video that is coming out probably in a few weeks, so stay tuned for that as well. Otherwise, I'll also list the cybersecurity project video I made last year, which is still relevant, but you can check that out linked in my description as well. And yes, when you apply to jobs, it is a numbers game, so you do want to apply to as many jobs as you can, but when you can, if you are applying to jobs on LinkedIn, sometimes you'll see the hiring manager or the recruiter name linked on the job listing. You can directly reach out or connect with them. And honestly, I would do that every time you have a chance to. If you submit an application to a job and you see a hiring manager attached to that application, then just send them a connection request, thank them for the opportunity, tell them you've applied. And the next time they look through that list of hundreds of candidates, your name is going to ring a bell because you've messaged them, you connected with them directly. And this is an exact success story that I've heard on LinkedIn from someone else who got a job through this exact method. So do not sleep on LinkedIn. 2025 is going to be your LinkedIn year. Last but not least, you really wanna focus on interview prep because this is going to be really important. If you send out a whole bunch of job applications, most people end up hearing back from only a few of them and you really wanna make those count. This means preparing for cybersecurity technical, security design, and behavioral interviews, which I also cover in my cybersecurity interview prep mastery course. And I'll link that in my description below if you're currently in the cybersecurity job market. I hope that can be helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully this video was helpful and let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. I would love to answer them. If this 
this video was helpful, please like and subscribe as it really does help out the channel. Don't forget to stay connected on LinkedIn, Discord, Instagram. All of those will also be linked in my description. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Thank you.